Up until now, we've been studying one-dimensional motion, with objects moving within straight lines. Now we're going to have objects moving out of those straight lines, and we're going to start with projectile motion. A projectile is something you toss or shoot into the air, like this ball. Again, we're going to ignore air resistance, which means the projectile will only be under the influence of gravity. Examples of projectiles include a ball that's kicked into the air, a cannonball after it's shot into the air, fireworks after the explosion, or water coming out of a water fountain. People had been interested in the study of projectile motion for a long time, because if you use cannons to attack your enemy, you would like to be able to hit your target. However, this curvy motion of projectiles is not very simple to analyze. You see, as the projectile goes, not only its angle or direction changes, but its speed also changes. Slower as it gets higher and faster as it moves slower. The first person to figure out how to analyze projectile motion was Galileo. Galileo found out that if you look at a projectile's horizontal motion and the vertical motion separately, the task becomes a lot simpler. For example, if you look at a projectile shot horizontally, it follows this curvy path. When you shine light from above and look at the projectile's shadow down here, you would see its horizontal motion. The shadow would travel to the right at a constant velocity, which means it moves the same distance every second. If you shine light from the side and look at the projectile's shadow on a screen over here, you would see its vertical motion, would, which happens to be exactly the same as an object in free fall starting from rest. It gets faster and faster every second. This makes sense because gravity pulls downward, so the gravitational acceleration should only affect the vertical motion, not the horizontal motion. Let's try this problem. In one of Robbie Madison's motorcycle stunts, he rode horizontally off the top of a building at 5 meters per second after a 100 foot or 30.5 meter drop. He touched down on a ramp. How long was Robbie in the air? How far to the side of the building was the touchdown? And uh, at what speed did the bike hit the ramp? We will still list the variables again, but of course, we will have to take care of the horizontal and the vertical motions separately. So this is what I do. I make this table kind of thing with horizontal on one side and the vertical on the other side. The kind of motion on the horizontal side is constant velocity motion, which means the acceleration is zero. On the vertical side, it's constant acceleration motion, and its acceleration is negative g. By the way, g itself is a positive number. It is the amount of gravitational acceleration. And this negative sign here tells you that it is in the negative y direction, a downward acceleration. So the acceleration is negative g. For constant velocity motion, the only equation we need is the displacement delta x equals to the velocity times time. For constant acceleration motion, we can use the four kinematics equations, those ones. By the way, these equations are also good for constant velocity motion. If you plug in acceleration equals to zero, then these two equations are just going to reduce to v equals to vo, because the velocity does not change. These two equations, if the acceleration is zero or v equals to vo, that gives you displacement equals to the velocity times the time, which is exactly the same as this equation. So there is no need to bother to use these equations for constant velocity motion. As you can see, we have different kinds of motion and different equations to use on the two sides. So it's important that you do not mix these two sides up. 
and it is a good idea for you to write like this to separate the two sides at least until you are really good at it. Now let's continue with the problem. The motorcycle goes off the building at a horizontal 5 meters per second. So that is the initial velocity on the horizontal side. The initial velocity on the vertical side is zero because the initial velocity is completely horizontal. It doesn't go up or down. So there is no initial velocity in the y direction. We know that the drop is 30.5 meters. That's the vertical displacement. So that's the delta y, 30.5 meters. Because he ends lower, that means that the displacement in the vertical direction is a downward negative 30.5 meters. And of course, in the vertical direction, we know the acceleration is negative g. And I'm just going to round it to 10. Of course, in this case, you, you, I'm most likely going to use a calculator. So I can use 9.8 or 10. It won't make any difference. We're looking for the time in air. Is that the time on the horizontal side or the vertical side? It turns out the two sides have different everything except for the time is the same on both sides. That's the only thing you can use, the same thing on the two sides. So you may be able to find the time on the vertical side or you may find the time on the horizontal side depending on what's given. In this problem, you already know three things on the vertical side. So you can use the vertical side to find the time because you have enough information for it. There is no final velocity, so this equation can be convenient. The delta y equals to vot plus one half at squared. And this gives you the initial velocity is zero. So this is uh, one half at squared. So I get negative five over here. I can just uh, divide by negative five on both sides and then take the square root. And I will get the time is 2.47 seconds. So this is the answer for part A. Part B, how far from the side of the building was the touchdown? This is the distance in the horizontal direction. So you're looking for delta x. The only equation we use for the horizontal side is velocity times time. We already have the velocity, that's 5. What is the time? Time, remember, that's the same thing on the vertical side. So this time you found on the vertical side can be used here, 2.47. And this gives us 12.35 meters. And then you want the speed at which the bike hits the ramp. So you want the touchdown speed, which means you want the final velocities first. You have to find the final velocity in the y direction and the final velocity in the x direction. Of course, it's easy on the horizontal side because the velocity never changes. The final velocity is the same, 5 meters per second. On the vertical side, you already know one, two, three, four, four things. That means any equation involving final velocity will work. The easiest one is probably the VO plus AT. And we can only use the VO on the vertical side. So do not use the 5, you have to use the 0. So it's 0 plus negative 10 times the 2.47. So this gives us a negative 24.7 meters per second. Now, if the problem asks you about the velocity at which the bike hits the ramp, then you can just answer the velocity has a horizontal component that's 5 meters per second. And its vertical component is negative 24.7, which means that at touchdown, the velocity has a horizontal component 5 meters per second, and the vertical component is a downward, that's why it's negative, the downward 
24.7 meters per second. Now, the total velocity is actually a slanted velocity this way. So if I make a rectangle over here, the diagonal would be the total velocity. And we can find this diagonal velocity using Pythagorean theorem. So this total velocity would equal to, well, the total velocity is the v. So we can write v equals to the square root of 5 squared plus 24.7 squared. See, c squared equals to a squared plus b squared. And then you take the square root, you get the c. OK, doing this, you will get 25.2 meters per second. This is the total velocity, the slanted velocity, and the speed is the magnitude of the total velocity. The speed is the magnitude of the velocity for instantaneous values, then they are the same. So this is the speed, which means that if you're looking for the speed, all you have to do is to find the velocity's x component square it plus the velocity's y component squared and then take the square root because of the Pythagorean theorem. That's how you find the speed in a two-dimensional case. If you had used the g equals to 9.8, these will be your answers. So if you look down from above, you would see only the horizontal motion. You would see the bike traveling at a constant 5 meters per second the entire time. If you look from the side, you would only see the vertical motion. You would see the bike in a free fall starting from rest, accelerating downward at this uh, gravitational acceleration g. So these projectile motion problems are just like a review. The vertical side will be just like those falling object problems. Here's a puzzle for you. I have this device here and two steel metal balls. They are identical, and each one has a hole at the center. Here's a bar, and there's a spring over here I can compress, and I can lock it in position like this. And I can hand these two balls, well, this one gets hand hung on the bar, the other one sits right here in position. I'm just going to remove these two balls right now. But if I pull this trigger, See, this ball here will lose the support and fall straight down. That ball there will get hit by the bar horizontally and gets shot horizontally. I'm going to clamp this up high horizontally like this. Compress the spring, put the balls in place, and then pull the trigger. The question for you is, after I pull this trigger, which of the two balls will hit the ground first? The one falling straight down? or the one that's shot horizontally. Did you hear there was only one sound when the balls hit the floor? The second quieter sound was the balls bouncing after they hit the floor. I know the balls are kind of hard to see, so you may wish to replay the launch and watch it again. I will play it at a slower speed here. Hopefully you can see that the balls coming down fall in the same vertical height in every frame. They also bounce at the same time at the end. The ball shot horizontally is like this motorcycle going off the top of the building with a horizontal velocity. Their initial velocities are completely horizontal. So the vertical side is exactly like a ball that is released from rest into a free fall, which means the two balls have exactly the same vertical motion, which means the two balls have exactly the same vertical motion and therefore they hit the ground at the same time. And if you can shoot this ball at a slower speed, it will go like this. Faster speed, it will be like that. If you shoot all of them at the same time, they would all hit the ground at the same time. 
because they all have exactly the same vertical motion.